We did the external anatomy of the heart, and now we're going to do the internal anatomy. Anatomy. And if you look at the picture at the top, we've already labeled the atria and the ventricles. Well, if you look down at the bottom, at the internal version, everything's in the same place because when you dissect a heart, you remove the front from the back, and what we're looking at is the back of the heart. We're still looking at it facing forward. We're still seeing the left side on our right and the right side on our left. So when we go to label these things, they're going to be in the same positions. I've just used the shortened form for each of the chambers. So LA is left atrium, LV left ventricle, RA right atrium, and RV right ventricle. And these are the chambers of the heart. Humans have a four-chambered heart, so do sheep, which is the kind of heart that we'll be dissecting. Animals like deer do as well. The four major vessels we already labeled up in the exterior version, and we'll label those again as well. So start by thinking about where are the vena cavas. You see the vena cavas up here. Think about where the vena cavas are in this diagram down here, in terms of what number represents each vena cava. So number seven corresponds to the superior vena cava. I'm not going to rewrite it. I'm just going to put a number seven up in this diagram because I don't want to get I don't want this one to be uh, too complex and messy. Then if I look down here, number eight corresponds with the inferior vena cava. So I'll just put a number eight up here to remind myself that that is the inferior vena cava. Now we see the aorta right here. And in this one, the aorta looks slightly different, but you can still see it's branching. Uh, you can see the fact that it forms an arch and then it has some branches coming off on it. So what is number six down here is the aorta up here. We are not yet concerned with what these branches are because we're not at that depth yet. So we're not going to worry about A, B, and C. On this upper diagram, we labeled the pulmonary arteries. Think about where they are on the lower diagram. What would correspond to the pulmonary arteries? And remember I told you that those do branch into a left and a right pulmonary artery. So you may have noticed down here that this looks very similar. Number five is the pulmonary arteries. So up here I'll give myself a number five. And down here I can see that the left pulmonary artery Okay, the last blood vessels that we have are the pulmonary veins. So where are those on this lower heart? Well, all that's left are the ones labeled number nine. And number nine, now here it looks like it's just one thing, but down here it looks like we have two on this side and two on this side. There's lots of branching of blood vessels as they get farther away from the heart. So you do have left and right pulmonary veins and those branch a lot the farther away from the heart you go. Up here where it says pulmonary veins, I'm going to add the number nine. We're now going to get to some structures that you can only see on the interior of the heart. So, so far, everything that we've seen on the inside, we could also see on the outside. Um, or at least with the chambers, we could estimate where the chambers were from the outside. On the inside, there are four valves. And I'm going to highlight those valves. These are the two valves on the right side of the heart, A and B. And so I use the coloration for blood that uh, lacks oxygen. On the right side of the heart, the valves are labeled C and D. So you'll notice these look like flaps, and valves are basically one-way doors. Blood can flow through one direction, but not the other direction. So let's start with the valves on the right side of the heart. The blood is going to go from the right atrium to the right ventricle through something called the tricuspid valve. Make sure you say these words um, so that you can really get familiar with them. So again, A is the tricuspid valve. Then we have B, which is the pulmonary valve. And you might have realized that the pulmonary valve leads to the pulmonary arteries. That word pulmonary comes up a lot, and in a later lesson we'll talk about why. Now the valves on the right. 
as the blood goes from the left atrium to the ventricle, it goes through the valve known as the mitral valve. It's most commonly called the mitral valve, and that's letter D, but it also has another name, which is the bicuspid valve. The tricuspid valve has three flaps, and the bicuspid valve has two flaps. Then you have this valve as the blood is leaving the left ventricle going to the aorta, so it's called the aortic valve because it's leading to the aorta. And we'll do lots more with blood flow soon. So those are the four major valves. The last part of our diagram is the septum. And sept means wall. If you touch the base of your nose, that is the septum of your nose. It separates your left and right nostril. And this is the septum of your heart that separates the left and right side of your heart. It's a thick wall of muscle that keeps the blood in the left and the right side from mixing together.